What's happening, folks? Jero here, aka JFro90, here with an album review, another Beatles album review, a long awaited album review. This is the Beatles A Hard Day's Night. This is their third album. And um, so, funny story in this this was actually a failed attempt at me trying to do two things at once. I really wanted to do, because um, I had a lot of requests for, at least for Patreon anyway, a re first, give you guys a first listen as well as a first review. And um, <laughs> I listened to this whole album with the camera on, but I forgot to push record. <sighs> Anyway, but what I am going to do, I'm going to do a reaction still because my reaction to um, one of the songs, I haven't marked, but uh, one of the songs, it caught me so, it's the reason reaction videos are a thing and it's the reason I wanted to do reaction videos because it's one of those things where I can't redo it for you guys. I can't because it's like I don't even have the footage to like study myself to fake it. But uh, long story short, I love the album. So for those of you, if this is your first time seeing any any of my um, album reviews, let me give you my system. And the number system goes like this: there are six numbers to my system. There is obsessed. Enough said. I'm obsessed with the song. I want to hear it again. I need to hear it immediately. There is love. I love it. It's going to go on a ton of playlists. Um, I'm not going to play it maybe all the time, but when it's on, I'm not like not going to skip it. That's the two. And number three is I like it. I like it, but I don't love it. So, you know, there's room. There's plenty of songs I've liked that I've learned to love, that I've learned to be obsessed with. And But, you know, I start off with I like it. And I like it means I just won't go to it very often. If, if I go to the album, if you tell me to pick a song, it's probably not going to be a three. Number four, what it definitely won't be is a meh. <laughs> meh is actually my least favorite grade to give because that kind of means it's forgettable. That kind of means that um, nothing about it really struck me, really moved me, you know. So that is a four. That's a meh. And then a five is a dislike. I don't like it. And it's, it's a soft. I, I just don't like it. It doesn't, nothing about it works for me you know and and with a man at least then it's like okay i i can see but with the five it's like nah uh and then the worst is number six is i hate it i loathe it and that that's why six is over here that's why six is over here so yeah um six means i don't ever want to hear that again and uh Luckily, I, I've never given a Beatles song a five or a six. So track number one, A Hard Day's Night. Whew, well, I already did a reaction to that one. But um, and it, like I said in the reaction, it's a song I never realized that I already heard before. And it, I, I love that because, you know, it's familiar territory. And I love the song. I gave it a one. I gave it an absolute one. And ever since then, and again, I, I was really trying to, I was really having a good time with the camera on for all of these songs. But um, ever since then... Since the reaction, I've been playing it and having it in my head like the whole time. So I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with it. I should have known better, led by John. I gave that one a two. I love it as well. And I love the melody and I love the rawness. There's a there's a specific part um, in the second verse where there's this falsetto that comes out of nowhere. And I love that. I, it really stuck with me. Really like that. Number three, If I Fell, which features, uh, which is led by both John and Paul. I gave that a one. It's a perfect, it's beautiful. The harmony, the melody, the instrumental is sweet, very sweet, but it's not cheesy, which is, you know, I, that, I, this, that, I love that. And that, that's the, the, I feel like that's the case for a lot of Beatles songs where it's like, they rolled, again, they were, I can see why they were heartthrobs. They rolled that sweet line, but they tiptoed in cheesy without a lot of times seeming cheesy from these early albums. And it works for me. Track number four, I'm Happy to Dance With You, led by George. I gave that one a one. And just simply, I really love that groove to it. I could not sit still listening to that song. And number five. 
Number five is a song I am going to be doing a reaction to. It will not be my first listen, but it will be my second listen. And again, that's this is the one where I can't even replicate the first lesson. <laughs> I can't replicate the first listen. I think that the instrumental came in. So I was like, what? Ooh. <laughs> I was like, hold on. <laughs> that, oh my God. That one took me by surprise. Um, Jeez. It's a, uh, and I love her. And I love her. Uh, led by Paul. And that instrumental is perfection. That's what I have written. That's a one. I, I am shooting the reaction to that right after I film this video. So the reaction is probably going to come first and then this video. But just know. <laughs> because I want to hear it again immediately. Right now. That's a one. That is a one. And Paul's voice was great. But I was really taken by the instrumentals. That was a perfect song. Track number six. Tell me why. Led by John. I gave that one a two. So much fun. Again, the vocals, instrumentals, it was all perfect. And it was another one that was hard to sit still. And the second verse, another falsetto comes. Another, and it, it, it's funny. So much of this album, so many of the songs have like twists and turns and journeys. And I really dig that. I really dig that. Can't buy me love. Come on, it's the it's the Beatles song I knew the most, even without hearing uh, their original rendition of it. Absolute one, absolute one, so much fun, and it, and I've always and always loved that song. Always loved that song. At any time, led by led by John, we have our first three where I like it, but um, it didn't really you know stick stick you know, but um, it's really smooth, it's really nice. I enjoyed it, but it's not a song that I could see myself like pinpointing, jumping back to, but I did really like it. And it just has, it has a fun flavor to it. And I just like the conviction in John's voice when he's saying it. He, there's something about John's voice on this album where it's like, there's a, there's a, there's like, I don't know if he's like more refined, but it's something where his singing has more conviction now than it did in the previous album. So picking up on that i'll cry instead too it has this funk and flavor of a god this has a funk and a flavor of a black gospel song and i i grew up in black church so it's like there's something about the rhythm and the style of that song that it just i could see a, i could see a choir in the background just adding some greatness to that and just it's done so and again it's another one john's voice for this song wow <laughs> really good. It's really, really good. Uh, and it, it's just B. It's another one where it was hard to sit still. So I gave that one a two. But I can see that one elevating to a one. That's why I like to do my album reviews over over the course of a couple of days because it gives chance it gives chances for songs to actually kind of grow or kind of wane and you know. Uh track number 10, Things We Said Today, led by Paul. This one I gave a two. And I was really stunned by it because it sounds a lot like the songs done in the later 60s. And this is 1964 and recorded in January 64. If you played this for me and asked me to guess what song, I mean, to guess what year this song came out and was recorded, I would off of the bat and off of my ear and ear for the 60s and all that, I would have guessed between 1967 and 1969. It has a psychedelic feel to it. And that was not at all the sound of 1964, as far as I know, in pop music and everything. And that that is beautiful it's really well done and it's another one it's another one i could see elevating and so i might do a reaction for that one too just to give it another shot because i do kind of want to play it again just to you know feel it a little bit more track number 11 when i get home led by john that is a two and it's another really tight rhythm a really great energy and it's, it's funny because i'm giving a lot of twos to this album because <laughs> i i'm loving a lot of these songs and i had a great listen session to this album but it's so funny because it's like with loving so much it almost it almost feels like one album <laughs> it almost feels like one continued performance or something like that but really fun but what I really liked about this song is that it had, it played with the sound. It played with different tones and textures in the melody and just a lot of fun. Track number 12, You Can't Do That, led by John, I gave a two. And for me, it's the instrumental. I love the instrumental of this song the most. 
and it's a all and it, it feels so much fuller. I hear cowbell, I hear uh, bongos, uh, the drums. Ringo is killing it on them drums for this album in general, but for this song, like just really the instrumentals set it apart. And then the last track of the album is track number 13, I'll Be Back, led by John. And no doubt it's a good song, but I gave it a three. And it's the second three of the album for I Like It. Um, I, it's another one I can't see myself quite going back to, and it's not making me want to hear more of it. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So it's like I wouldn't skip it, but I wouldn't go to it. So I enjoyed it. Overall, overall, I... <laughs> it's funny the progression it's funny the progression i already i this is my favorite of the albums i've done so far <laughs> They're, it's, it's that thing that's what i love about this is i'm hearing the growth this is the first album where the, where john and paul wrote every single song note though there is no ringo song and I'm a little disappointed and devastated by that because I love me some Ringo. <laughs> I love them all. But like I said, Ringo really blew. Y'all don't know. Ringo, that's another one that I'm sad that there's not a first reaction for. My first time hearing Boys, that was like, wait, what? What? <laughs> but um, yeah, there's no... there. There's no Ringo song, but um, yeah, I still though I give this one an A minus, and the minus is only for like the two songs I gave a three, where it's like I can't quite see myself going back to. So it's not a perfect A plus album where every single song is like I can well, I can play this, I will go to any song, da, da, da. but. I really enjoyed this album. I really enjoyed this album a lot, and I I love the growth, and I love the growth in their sound, and I'm really. I'm really excited and interested on where their sound goes from here. Because, you know, like I said, with the Beatles, I have a little outline of their progression without knowing the names of songs. And But I, I, I can, you know, they're, they're, this is filling in some blanks here, and I like that. So um, I hear a tighter blend in their harmonies and in, in, in the three individual vocals I heard. Um, John, Paul, and George... Their vocals, it's funny. It's like, even though George only got one song as well, it sounded, it sounded, they're, they're, they're perfecting their crafts, all of them, all of them in this. And even though Ringo don't have his song, uh, the drums, the drums in the whole album, like, killer. This is, the, instrumentally alone, this would have been my favorite album of theirs. This could have been an album of instrumentals and it still would have won. This is hot. And so, yeah, overall grade, A-. minus. I really enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments below what is your favorite track off the album. Right now, mine is, I'm going to say the song that I'm going to film a reaction for as soon as this camera goes off, and I love her. Uh, because I have never heard that song before, and the instrumental blew my mind. I don't know what I'm going to do again when um, this song starts playing again, <laughs> but this instrumental... It's hot, and I've never heard it in my life, and I want, I have to do this video so I can play this song immediately. That's why I'm doing this video now, even. So, again, let me know your favorite song in the comments. Hope you enjoyed my review of the album. A lot more Beatles to come, a lot more albums and reactions and all that to come. Uh, let me know from the next album, too, what individual songs, based on my review based on what you've seen so far and what I like, my style. Let me know what song would you like me to react to individually before the album reaction? Uh, just because, you know, I know what this one only took like two songs, but I want, I want to do more. I want to do more. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video, please like subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Uh, remember the goal for getting to September 20th is 10,000 subscribers and we are on track to do that. And man, killer. We're definitely going to get there. We're definitely going to get there. And if you want to follow me on my social media, that's in the description below. If you'd like to donate to myself or the channel, that's also in the description below. You can technically do both by joining my Patreon, become a patron. When you do that, then you get early access to reactions and videos like these. You get um, Patreon-only videos and reactions and all kinds of fun Patreon things I got planned. And also, any comments, uh, requests, and all that stuff, they have a priority over YouTube and all the other social media stuff because, you know, you guys are helping fund 
the life. So very much appreciate it. And shout out to my patrons. Got some Beatle fans in there. But above all else, above everything else, I appreciate every single person who pressed play on this video. Again, take care of yourself and each other. Saying that I want it.